Budgeting can be an arduous task, but there are tons of resources out there that help to make the process a lot easier. And I've been using several tools that have made the whole budgeting process feel a lot less stressful. It's taking the angst out of the process, and I feel like I'm a lot more in control of my money by using these resources. So I'm gonna share with you my top budgeting resources so that you can win with your money as well. Hi, I'm Shayna of The Wealth Five, and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth so that you can live your best financial life. I don't know about you, but when I am constantly micromanaging my budget and worrying over my finances, I'm not living my best financial life. But with the tools and resources that I've found and been using, I have found that my budgeting and my finances have been a lot more easy. So that way I'm not worrying about everything that comes up or even the day-to-day -day tasks that have to do with my money management. I'm not having to worry about those things, so I am living my best financial life. But before I get into my top budgeting resources, make sure that you hit the like button on this video because it really helps out the channel and it helps other people to learn about these videos so that we all can live our best financial life. So make sure that you hit that like button and I really appreciate you for doing that. I have a recent video where I share some tips to help you feel less stressed out about budgeting and help you feel in control with your spending plan. And if you're interested in checking out that video, you can check it out at the card linked above. But that video, I basically share four different strategies for how to feel more control with your spending plan. And so now I'm going to share my resources that will help you with the tips that I mentioned in the previous video so that you can start to implement some of these strategies and so that you can win at your finances. It's really important that you track your finances. So when I talk about tracking your finances, I'm not only talking about the money that you spend on a day-to-day -day basis, but also the money that you're saving and investing. And so it's really important that you have an idea from a historical standpoint about what you have been doing, so that way you can make changes for the future that really align with your goals. Because when you don't track, you don't know where you're heading towards. And so for me, I really use personal capital to help me get a full picture of what I am spending my money on and where I'm saving and investing. And I find it to be one of the best tools for tracking my finances because I can see the trajectory of where I'm going and I can see if it is aligning with what I have set as my financial goals. And so I highly recommend that you use any tool out there that's going to give you a really good comprehensive view of your finances so that you can track what you have been doing so that you can make changes that keep you towards where you want to go. And so there are tons of tools out there similar to personal capital. I just happen to use personal capital, but there's also mint.com and other things that you can use for free are your bank accounts and your credit card statement. You can literally just pull those things and see what you've been doing. But I like personal capital because everything is just all one in place. If you're interested in checking out personal capital, I have a link down in the description box so that you can sign up for the free account to have all of your wealth management, all your finances in one place so that you can track everything, like every single thing that has to do with your financial life so that you can know what you have been doing and where you want to go. As you can see, I'm really big into tracking. And I think it's important to track because you won't know if you're sticking to your plan if you don't track. So now with that said, I do think it's really important to have a plan in place. It's really important that you have a plan so that way you have somewhere to go. You have a direction, you have some foresight. As my high school principal used to say, without a plan, you plan to fail. So you need to have a plan in place. And so for me, along my financial journey, I have different ways that I've been planning. And so 
when I was getting paid on a monthly basis, I had a monthly financial plan. And then when I moved to a position where I was getting paid on a bi-weekly basis, I moved to a bi-weekly plan. And then later I've learned, I like a mix of them all. And so through trial and error, I figured out ways that really work for me. And I've noticed that a lot of my viewers also seem to like these ways of planning their financing. So I came up with a whole suite of tools, I guess, <laughs> to help with tracking and also with planning, but really more so with the planning. Along my financial journey, I've toyed with different ways of planning my finances. So I've come up with digital spreadsheets so that I can budget on my computer. And then I've also been able to budget and create plans on pen and paper by having printables. And so now I have them available for you to also use as well. And I really love having both personally because the digital Digital version like with my spreadsheets I'm able to do everything automatically right I'm able to plug in the numbers and everything's working and whatnot and I also have an overview of what I plan to spend on an annual basis on a monthly basis and even a weekly basis but then the printable versions come in place whenever like I'm on the go I'm not really by my computer and I'm able to just write down something and have that available and have that note taken down and be able to keep on top of my finances or whatever it is that I'm trying to plan and so if you're interested in checking out my planners my digital or my printable planners for your finances I'll have a link down in the description box and I would love your support with that because I found personally that they've been helpful but I've also noticed that a few of you have also found that my methods have worked for you as well so now I'm offering the tools that I use to you too Sinking funds have been an integral part of my financial life. It has helped me out a ton and saved me from a lot of just stressful situations where if I didn't have them in place, I just would have been freaking out about where the money was going to come from. But I've been able to have a lot more ease with my finances by having sinking funds in place. And so I started off, you know, playing with different ways of having sinking funds. When I started my financial journey, I started with cash envelopes. And so I have a video that details cash envelopes. So if you're interested in checking them out, you can find it here at this link above. But cash envelopes ultimately didn't really work for like who I am. Like I'm a like a modern type of girl. I like everything digital. If I can't have it digital, I want it digital, right? And so I look for other alternatives alternatives to have like digital sinking funds and so a lot of people if they don't do cash envelopes they tend to use like capital one 360 and I love capital one 360 I've actually been with them since before they were capital one 360 and I started banking with the bank I think it was ING bank and I started banking with ING like years like probably 10 years ago um, when I read I will teach you to be rich I signed up for that bank and then they ended up becoming Capital One 360. Capital One 360 is a really good option for digital sinking funds because under one login, you actually are able to have multiple bank accounts. So each account is like a separate account technically because they all have different account numbers, but you can ask them access them all through one login page. So once you log in, you see all your different accounts and you can also customize the account names to be, you know, whatever that sinking fund is for you. And you have a debit card that links to all of your sinking funds. And so I really like Capital One 360 and I tend to use them on a day-to-day -day basis for my checking as well. If you're interested in checking out Capital One 360, as your digital sinking fund account you can check out the link down in my description box to sign up and create a bank account with them and you'll actually get a few dollars for opening up an account by using my link but i actually have a better alternative for sinking funds digital sinking funds so i actually use my digital sinking funds with simple bank and the reason why i like it better is because they give you one account number so if you remember correctly i said that capital one 360 actually gives you multiple account numbers and they give you one debit card and the thing with capital one 360 is that you can only link your one debit card to one of those account numbers and so you can't just easily spend using your debit card among all your different accounts 
but with simple bank you can do that so you have one account and then you create all your little mini funds within simple bank and then with your debit card you're able to you know swipe it for different transactions and then it will know based off of how that transaction is categorized where to pull the money from so i can tell it like hey whenever i swipe for geico pull it from my insurance sinking fund and you can also set up other rules like if it's money being spent during a certain time period, it'll pull from a specific fund. So I like that a lot better as an alternative. But both of them really work and actually Capital One 360 is like the popular option. But to me, <laughs> Symbol Bank is a superior option. I also have a link down in the description box for you if you want to sign up for an account. Unfortunately, they don't have a referral program at this point, so you won't get any money right now. That might change in the future, but at the time that I'm filming this, they don't have a referral program, so you won't get any money for opening up an account. But if you want to learn a little bit more about how I use Simple Bank for digital envelopes or for sinking funds, you can check out this video right here linked above in the cards but I highly suggest that you use a digital version if that's your thing for your sinking funds because I think it's a great great option it works so seamlessly check it out another key component of staying on top of your finances is automation you want to make sure that all of your finances as much as possible is automated so I highly suggest that you have all the key things that have to do with your finances automated from your bill pay to your transfers to your savings everything automated so that you can stay on top of the plan that you've designated for yourself so one of the top tools that I have for this is making sure that you use the tools within your bank itself so most bank accounts come with these tools already that will allow you to schedule bill payments it will allow you to do internal and external transfers from one account within the same bank or one account to another bank at another institution so you want to make sure all of this is automated so you don't have to think about it you also don't have to forget about it either everything is working in the background for you on your behalf all according to your plan so make sure that you have things automated and you might be thinking that I'm afraid to automate things because what if you don't have money or whatever you have a plan in place so rely on your plan and you'll know that you have money to do these things to have the automation work for you because you're sticking to the plan that you've already set aside if you are going to have to do an overdraft or anything like that that means that your plan is not working it's not the automation that's the issue it's your plan so make sure that your plan is solid and then use the automation to just support everything that you've already done in your plan so that's a major key because you don't want to have to forget or have to rely on yourself to remember any of these things to stay on track with your financial goals now if you haven't watched my first video on my tips for having a spending plan that works best for your financial life I highly suggest that you go check that out now I have the video linked here for you to check it out and I hope that these resources are really helpful for you remember all the links are down in the description box and make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so I can see you in the next one thanks again